It is not every day that a sitting president with sweeping powers can be challenged for actions taken, and the challengers have their way unless it is through a court order. Now, in 2009, then then Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission Advisory Board, with the help of Parliament, forced a presidential appointee to throw in the towel when he ran out of options, so was the appointing authority. However, some of those who stood in the way of powers that be and spearheaded the resistance would later pay for their sins. Call it the prize of fidelity to the rule of law. My name is Duncan Haimba. This is KTN News. In September 2009, Kenyans witnessed a dramatic battle of wits. It was a case of a legal and political battle that saw presidential powers tested to the limit. And at the end of the day, a 12-member team forced the president to eat a humble pie and rescind his decision. It was a case of the Kenya Anti-Corruption Advisory Board versus the executive, while parliament was an interested party. Three individuals were at the center of all this. Senior Counsel Kongo Mogeni, who chaired the advisory board of the now defunct Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission, KACC. Justice Aaron Ringera, who was the director at the KACC. Then the president, Mwai Kibaki. A five-year tenure of Aaron Ringera as the director at the Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission was coming to an end on 8th September 2009. The advisory board had a duty to set in motion a process of appointing a new director. Senior counsel and now Nyamira Senator Okongo Eric Omogeni was the chair of the advisory board who had replaced senior counsel Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi, who had quit the position after falling out with President Mwai Kibaki, whom Ahmed Nasir had accused of flouting the law by declining to appoint Dr. Julius Rotich, the Director for Finance. When I was appointed to the board uh, on 28th of July 2006, I found that uh, Justice Rengara was already serving uh, is, is tenure, five-year tenure from 204 that was meant to end in 2009. But in between, the contract of uh, one of the assistant directors who was appointed with the same terms like Ringera, that is uh, uh, Mutonyi, came to an end. And uh, we sat as a board and we agreed that the best way to ensure that there is transparency and fairness is to advertise his position, but he be given a chance to reapply if he wanted and we came up with a, an evaluation matrix to assess performance and all this. So we advertised this position and uh, Mutonyi reapplied, he competed with other candidates and uh, he emerged the best candidate and uh, we had him reappointed. John Mutonyi's position was well handled in that no controversy arose within the KACC itself or from other stakeholders from outside. Then came the moment for a heavyweight. The director Aaron Ringera's five-year term was coming to an end. That is where the legal and political battles began. Now, when it came to the end of Ringera's tenure, some intrigues started playing out about uh, three months to the end of his tenure. We had about seven members whose term was uh, coming to an end, including the then chair, uh, the late Alan Ngugi. And uh, Justice Ringera wrote an opinion to the Attorney General uh, recommending that uh, two things should happen. An amendment to the law, one, to obligate the nominating bodies to write a letter confirming that they have no problem with uh, the serving members uh, being reappointed for another second term of five years, which the law had allowed. And then he also said that pending the nomination of new members, the ones who are serving should continue serving in office 
till the new ones are appointed. Basically, that was to ensure that when issues of discussions of the expiry of his term were to come into play, certain members were, you know, to be in office. But that never happened. Former Senator for Mandera, Bill Okero, was one of the 12th member board at KACC in then and admits power games had kicked in much earlier. You will remember that um, much earlier, the president and the then, the then justice minister, uh, I think they had made up their mind that Rungera should be reappointed. And so what they did was to delay the entire uh, appointment of the advisory board. So from uh, 2008, I think um, uh, it, it, it took almost a year before they could reconstitute the new, <coughs> the new board. Just like in the case of Dr. Julius Rotich earlier on, President Mwaiki Baki had left out the name of Bill Okero as he gazetted other members of the advisory board for political reasons. Kero had been nominated by his colleagues from the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya, ISPAC, to represent them on the board. But the president conveniently left out his name as he gazetted the rest. Kero was paying a price for having been a thorn in the flesh of the NAC regime because earlier during Kibaki's first term in office, then as member of parliament for Mandera Central, Kero, a Kanu member of parliament, was shadow minister for finance who kept the NAC regime that had taken over the reins of power on a platform of zero tolerance to corruption, which the former lawmaker says had performed dismally. We are not abolishing the Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission because I think we all agree that there is room for it. But we are not happy with the performance of the director. During the time that Mr. Rigera has served as director of CASA, has he been successful? The answer to my question was no. Of all the corruption cases lodged in court since 2003, there have been convictions in 75 cases as at 30th June 2009. We had now convened a meeting sometime in September where we would now discuss the reappointment. We had made up our minds. Uh, I mean, it was clear in, at the time that uh, Kenya and Corruption Commission had failed this Mali. Uh, the five years of Rengera was a disaster. I mean, uh, and, and, you know, the anglo and corruption. Uh, people were very highly pleased and very close to the president who were involved in massive uh, corruption. Uh, and he was very cosy uh, with, 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 with the executive. And, the, and, and, and so it, it had affected the image of Kenya and Corruption Commission. And so the uh, Kenyans had lost confidence in that institution. So we wanted to get a new team and a new face. And our position was very clear. And we made it clear immediately we came in that we wouldn't be looking for a new face. But the mandate of this commission, insofar as law enforcement is concerned, is limited to investigations and making recommendations for prosecution or otherwise. In uh, August, during a board meeting, the issue of uh, Justice Ringara's contract uh, lapsing, I think that was going to be on uh, 8th of September 2009, came up for discussion uh, at the board meeting. So the board meeting agreed that uh, Justice Ringara should issue a notice uh, for a board meeting uh, that we agreed was to be held on the 2nd of September. 2009, so that we agree on advertising of his position, and uh, we also discuss on uh, the person we were going to appoint to be the interim director, pending uh, the reappointment of, uh, I mean, pending the interviewing process, the advertisement interviewing process, approval by parliament, and then forwarding the name to the president for formal gazettement because that is the procedure we had in place. By virtue of his position, Justice Ringera was the secretary of the commission and as such, he was the one to issue a notice over his position. But as the board was awaiting things to fall in place procedurally, State House struck. 
On 31st August 2009, President Mwai Kibakiri appointed Justice Aaron Ringera for another five-year term. Then on, on one evening, I, I received a shock. I think, <laughs> I think it was on, uh, if I remember well, 31st of August uh, 2009. It was about, uh, uh, it was around four o'clock. I was driving along L Slash Avenue. Then I received news, uh, you know, four o'clock news, that President Kibaki had reappointed uh, Justice Ringera together with the other directors, uh, then Justice Sichale and uh, Justice Moki Wanjala for a term of five years without any recourse to the board, without any par parliamentary approval. And at first, you know, I thought maybe this was fake news. So I, I, I picked my phone and uh, I called uh, Justice Ringera saying, you know, I've had some uh, news uh, to the effect that the president has uh, reappointed you for a further five years. And uh, he told me, yes, chairman, I've been reappointed. I'm in my office. I'm actually enjoying a cup of tea in celebration. So I was taken aback. I was. I was like, how can this happen? Because we are a body that is supposed to push for ethical standards, transparency, and, and uh, you know, giving equal chances to all Kenyans. That's what we were put in office to do, to fight bodies that were trying to, uh, you know, have skewed processes of appointing people to offices. The president did the, uh, what we didn't expect. He decided to uh, reappoint and gazette, or rather gazette, the reappointment of um, Rungera. Uh, and, 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 you know, in total breach of the, of the law. The law was very clear um, that the board must advertise and recruit, and then parliament must approve. And his role was really to, to gazette, um, uh, you know, process of the competition. It was illegal. Um, and, 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 and so we were, we were, um, not surprised because we, we've seen the intrigues from the time our name came in that, you know. On 1st of September 2009, I met the board members. Overwhelmingly, they were all in agreement that the decision that was taken by the president was in bad taste. Because remember, we had issued a, a board notice calling for a meeting on 2nd of September 2009 to deliberate on the advertisement of Justice Ringera's position. He is the one, as the secretary of the board, who issued that notice to the members. We had discussed in, in the board and agreed on that, on, on, on the way forward, which was that we advertise his position. Now, how would we have sat in the board to work with somebody who was going contrary to the position of the advisory board and on clear provisions of the law that had put us into office and that also put him in office. So my take was that we needed to set an example to the country that as a body that is uh, tasked with uh, fighting corruption and unethical practices, despite the consequences, we should not rubber stamp a decision of a president who was acting contrary to the clear provisions of the law. That is when a David versus Goliath battle literally began. It was KACC advisory board challenging a commander-in-chief openly on what the chairman and his board believed was a question of fidelity to the law. Uh, so I felt very uncomfortable to, uh, you know, agree with the president on that position he had taken because as a lawyer, I was convinced that... Uh, that process was illegal and uh, unconstitutional and that the president did not have any powers under the law to reappoint Justice uh, Ringera. So I took it up upon myself, upon myself to, you know, uh, bounce this off my other 11 board members and I, I called them and I told them, have you heard the news? This is what has happened. And we agreed that we should meet. I told them I'm calling for an extraordinary board meeting on the 1st of September 2009 to deliberate on that move. So come the following day, we 
we all uh, agreed to meet at the headquarters of K KACC, that's at Integrity Center. And when we went there, there was a lot of hostility. I think the word had one round that we were not uh, in support of that reappointment. In light of the prevailing circumstances, the advisory board prepared a tough statement and released to the media for dissemination to the public. So we issued a one-page uh, tacit press release and denounced the action that had been taken by the president. And uh, we told the president that we respect you as the president of this country. But unfortunately, uh, Mr. President, what you have done is illegal and uh, it will not have the support of the Kenya Anti-Corruption Advisory Board. And we released uh, that press release. The director was to leave the office on 8th September 2009. Amid the standoff between State House and the Integrity Center, the board turned to Parliament for help. Amos Wako was the Attorney General, government's legal advisor who had laughed off Parliament's opinion over the matter. Gitobu Imanyara was a member of Parliament and was among members of Parliament who opposed President Kibaki's move. Uh, by that time, uh, Parliament, there was a committee of uh, justice and legal affairs in the National Assembly that was chaired by Abdi Kadir. He was the chair then. I had written to them and uh, reminded them that what the law stated, that we were to make recommendation on uh, the appointment of director for Kenya Corruption Commission to Parliament. Parliament was to sit, uh, wait, the candidate and then forward the, the, the candidate if he gets the parliamentary approval to the president for the appointment. And I, I told them that this process had not been followed and we are not going to recognize the reappointment of Justice uh, Ringera. His term has ended. We have refused to renew it. As a, uh, we have annulled the decision to renew it. So he has no basis to lodge any complaints. So we will still have as a parliament the power to bring a substantive motion in the House to discuss the conduct of uh, not only him but the Judicial Service Commission to send him back to a judiciary with, uh, under circumstances under which he had lost the confidence of the people. The resolution of parliament, okay, uh, that's the opinion of parliament. But the binding opinion is from the court. Now, that's a law. The 10th Parliament stood its ground challenging President Kibaki and had threatened to withhold payment of Ringera's salary and his two assistant directors if they remained in office through an appropriations bill. An amendment has been introduced to the appropriations bill to remove the vote items relating to salary of the director and the assistant director. If he wishes, uh, he can act for free or call a, a Kamukunji in Uhuru Park uh, where we can raise money to help him. I think Parliament, in my view, was very, uh, very critical in this, in this matter because they annulled the gazettement uh, of, of the reappointment of, of Regera and, 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 and threatened um, to, you know, withhold funding. Uh, to the to the to the commission. So I, I, I and, and and of course when you have the parliament behind you, then you know you you get encouraged to fight on. So the board uh, had that encouragement from from parliament. The climax of Ringera's reappointment drama was on 8th September 2009. The board had convened another media briefing, which was nearly scuttled. So when we met on 8th of September, I just you know I called the media, <laughs> there were a number of them in the boardroom, and all the board members were there. We had prepared, uh, you know, a press release, which was a very small press release, one page, and uh, all of us had sat, the cameras had been set, and I had also occupied my seat as the chair, ready to read the, the press release. When uh, my secretary then <laughs> brought a note and said, uh, 
here is a note uh, for you, it's urgent. So when I opened the note, it was saying uh, there is an urgent call. Uh, receive it before you read your press statement. So I excused myself and, and told the, uh, the media people and my board members that uh, I'm attending to a small issue, but I'm coming to read the press release. The board's chair was just about to read his well-spaced 13-line statement when his secretary quickly rushed into the boardroom, asking him to attend to an urgent call before addressing the media. So when I retreated to my office, a voice told me that we are calling from State House and uh, the president has seen uh, a copy of the press release that you want to read to the media. You have persisted in uh, challenging a decision that has been made by the president of the Republic of Kenya, who is a commander in chief <laughs> of the armed forces. They said this is unprecedented, it has never happened, and that if I go ahead, I will be arrested and be charged with subversion. And that I should call off that press release and allow Justice Rengera to assume his office in line with the Gazette notice that had been signed by the then President Mwai Kibaki. Uh, to be honest, <laughs> that was a bit scary. <laughs> you know, that was a, a bit scary. And uh, I, I thought what to do, I thought about uh, the image on my person as somebody who was not just chair of uh, Kenyan Corruption Advisory Board, but I was also at that time serving as the chair or president of the Law Society of Kenya. I also looked at the impunity uh, you know, that uh, would, would uh, take root if I was to give in to a, a decision that the president had taken, but which was contrary to the clear provisions of the law. So I quickly thought that if I shared uh, uh, the message that had been passed to me by the caller who alleged to be calling from status to my other members of the advisory board, they will chicken out and I'll be left alone. So I called my wife and shared what had happened, and I said, if something happens, uh, I'm not a thief. I'm merely defending uh, the constitution of the republic. I'm advancing the rule of law, and I'm acting in the best interest of the people of Kenya. So I went back to the board meeting, uh, fairly shaken, but read the statement, nevertheless and said uh, that uh, the contract of uh, Ringera was expiring that afternoon and that the advisory board would not give him a new letter of appointment and that we would not set his uh, terms of service and that we will advise finance not to process any payments in form of salary. Nearly all forces had ganged up to block Justice Aaron Ringera from being reappointed for a second term. A besieged man who was equally determined to fight on and not to disappoint his appointing authority. The director lived between the hammer of his friends and the anvil of his opponents. Our work is limited to investigating and forwarding files to him with recommendations which he may or may not accept. Events that followed in that week of September were both dramatic and tense. Few individuals banking on the rule of law had literally held the president and his preferred appointee hostage. Honestly, I, I was expecting the worst because a number of uh, powerful forces were not happy with uh, the position that was taken by the advisory board. There were a number of people within the system then who wanted the status quo. 
to be maintained. And I knew that uh, it was not going to be easy for me. And I knew that I was going to be in bad books with the government of the day. But I said uh, I would live with the consequences. I, I was ready to live with any consequences, including any uh, threatened arrest, uh, any uh, steps maybe to have me removed from office. I was ready. I was ready for the consequences. The, the, the issue is there was clearly an attempt to try and protect those very close to the president. And, and, and this, 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 this was coming from the uh, from the president and the cabinet members trying to protect, you know, you know their 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 their, their team, and you know it's about. So I I think then uh, Ringera, as as the as the as the director of anti-corruption, therefore, um, and, and 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 a person close to this uh, to this to this team, um, was not in a position to take action. Um, he may have taken action on other small, you know, whatever, and that, that, that has been always the issue. He kept saying that I'm going to deal with the big fishes, but the perception, you know, and the reality was that almost all the cases that ended up in court were small fish, and, and that's not what the Kenyans really expected. It's one thing for a cabinet minister to step aside, but it's another when Kenyans expect the same minister to be charged in court and convicted, you know, for the, and that's what was not coming. And I, so, so in my view, really, the, the, the issue was, um, uh, was executive. Despite a spirited fight and presidential shielding, an already besieged KSCC director eventually succumbed to pressure, throwing in the towel together with his two assistant directors, Fatuma Sichale and Smokin Wanjala. And I have today turned out our resignations to His Excellency the President. A statement that in itself ended a stalemate between the presidency and the KACC advisory board that was backed by parliament. A statement that saw Ringera speak biblically as he exited. As the holy book, and in particular the Ecclesiastes of Solomon, say, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. The time for the director of CAS and his deputy to exit the stage of the anti-corruption struggle has come. The learned friend left the integrity center still standing his ground. Had I not been convinced about the legality of my appointment, reappointment, I would never have taken it up. Blaming his departure on a cabal of individuals, he said he had stepped on their toes in his quest to slay the dragon of graft, given that in mid-August that year he had tabled a list of shame in Parliament. Look at um, the list we tabled in Parliament the other day of people under investigation or people who have been recommended for prosecution, or people against whom suits for recovery of illegally and corruptly obtained wealth have been filed. And ask yourself whether there is validity in that statement and answer it yourself. Among other things that contributed to Ringera's bowing out was a narrative that was coined and peddled among Kenyans that the under siege director was demanding a whooping 150 million shillings before he steps down, basically painting him as an enemy to Kenyans, a matter that annoyed Ringera. Uh, I've heard uh, people say that um, uh, he's contemplating suing for, uh, I don't know, 150 million, but on what basis? His term has ended. We've refused to renew it as a, uh, we have annulled the decision to renew it. So he has no basis to lodge any complaint. I have not asked for 150 million from anybody before I can exit. And nobody has made an offer. And if such an offer were made, I would reject it. Another school of thought believes the executive did not exhibit intentions to fight graft. Those are the days when Members of Parliament were also, a cabinet was being appointed from members of Parliament. Uh, some of the, 
the ministers as usual were very, very uh, supportive of the president's action. Uh, Mutula was a minister for justice, you know, coming out very strongly, and and and, and several of his other uh, colleagues. But um, uh, I think the parliament, the two committees of parliament, uh, the one on delegated legislation and the one for legal affairs led by Abdikader, I think. Uh, th those committee members were the, the ones who really came out very strongly, um, uh, if I remember. Yeah. Prior to the 2009 Ringera reappointment drama, as the chair of the Law Society of Kenya, Omogeni had poked the president in the eye during the controversial 2007 presidential election. I was called upon as the chair to craft a statement which was to reflect on the position of the Law Society of Kenya. So the most important paragraph of that statement was that we made a conclusion that President Kibaki was not validly elected as a president during the 2007 elections and that he did not have the legitimacy to take oath and serve as the second president, I mean, uh, to serve his second term as the president of the Republic of Kenya. So we called upon the president then, Kibaki, to resign. And then we called upon uh, the electoral commission then, which was headed by Kivuhitu, to call for fresh elections so that we could have a rerun between President Kibaki and the candidate who was number two, Raira Amoro uh, Odinga. A statement that was disowned by a section of members within LSK among those who had supported Kibaki's re-election bid. Oh, my friend, the reaction was vicious. <laughs> the reaction was vicious. I called, uh, I mean, I received a call from the then Minister for Justice, Mother Karua, asking me whether the position I'd taken was the position of uh, the members of law society, uh, <laughs> which she was also a member, <laughs> and she had, had not consulted her. She said there are a number of members of law society who had voted for President Kibaki. Um, was I not going against their right by issuing that statement? She reminded me that the then chair of IBC, Samuel Kivuit, was himself a renowned lawyer and is the one who had issued a certificate to the president uh, announcing that he had been validly re-elected for a second term. She also told me that as a lawyer, I know <laughs> that I have no capacity to arrive at a conclusion that a president was not validly elected. That is a preserve of, of our courts. She was furious. And then a number of members, interestingly, one group was led by <laughs> PLO Lumumba. They wrote to me requisitioning that I hold, I call for a special uh, annual general meeting of the Law Society of Kenya members so that the members can deliberate on this a very far-reaching decision <laughs> that the Law Society had taken and uh, the, the requisition had been signed by a number of, of, of lawyers, uh, you know, led by PLO Lumumba. My own friends, you know, from the Kikui community, some who had actually supported my uh, election as the chair of Law Society of Kenya, wrote to me, I received over 100 letters uh, from the supporters of Kibaki you know, protesting that that statement was in bad taste. A company secretary of one of the banks uh, I was acting for, uh, uh, you know, a very supportive client, called me and uh, reminded me that she is a supporter of President Mwai Kibaki and that by re releasing that statement without consulting her, I was... Uh, uh, really trying to trump on our constitutional rights of electing a president. And uh, let me tell you, Duncan, within a week, uh, I had been removed from the panel of that bank. And to date, 
have never uh, received any file from, from that uh, particular client. So any decision you make in life, there, there are consequences. It was not just a thought. It's that the council had not met and there wasn't a resolution to that effect. The council of the law society, and I've been a council member, make statements, you know, through uh, a council resolution. And then the chairman is mandated to go out and give a statement, especially on weighty matters. There are matters where the chairman can give his view on rule of law. It doesn't mean he is gagged because he's so so a Kenyan. Uh, or she, because it could also be a she, although we've just missed the boat this time. Um, it is possible that a chairman can issue a statement, but on weighted matters, it has to be by resolution of the council. And that's what I was challenging at that time. Karua says she faulted the then LSK chair purely based on principle. A person holding a chair of a professional body, they must try to balance not give their political views as the views of the society. Because being Kenyans, they also have political leanings, but they must not display them openly. Then came a time to pay the price of fidelity to the law when the 2010 constitution was promulgated. The life of the Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission and its entire board came to an end by operation of the law in August 2011, paving way for the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. New positions or opportunities were up for grabs, which the former KACC Advisory Board Chair, Okongo Mogeni, also applied, not knowing that it was the turn for the presidency he had challenged to return the favor. So when our term came to an end uh, in August uh, 2011, an advert was placed in the newspaper. Uh, for people to apply for the new position of the chair of, of the five-member commission and membership. So I was one of the candidates who applied. And uh, we did interview through a panel that has been, had been picked through representatives of the office of the president, the office of the then prime minister, Raila Odinga, stakeholders, professional societies of East Africa, Kenya Human Rights Commission, uh, ETC. And after the interview process, I was ranked the top candidate. And... Uh, a recommendation was made to the president to forward my name <laughs> to parliament for vetting. <laughs> but when that uh, name reached OP, the people serving uh, the president then, led by I think there was somebody who was called Kiara, made it very clear that this person challenged the re-election of President Kibaki in his second term, and there is no way he can be reappointed to be the chair of the new body, which was Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. So he bypassed my name and uh, opted to pick the person who was number two. Uh, that was Mumu Matemu. And you remember that process was very, very controversial on the floor of the house. Uh, when Mumu, was, uh, Mumu Matemu's name was taken to the floor, members of parliament questioned and said, if Omogeni was uh, the top candidate, uh, and also given the experience he has on issues dealing with anti-corruption. Why has the president opted to pick the candidate who was number two? And uh, you remember when voting was done on the floor, there was a tie. Those who were in favor of Matemu were 49. Those who were in favor of uh, Omogeni were 49. So the, 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 the statement was made very clear to me that President Kibaki uh, wanted to uh, have a score, you know, to hit back on the stand that are taken uh, uh, around his re-election for his second term in 2007. When he applied for the position of being a member of the National Land Commission, he was also among the top candidates, but again his name was rejected. A situation he believes until now was purely out of vendetta because of holding the executive to account. Just to be sure, I tried again when the National Land Commission was being set up. This time I said let me go for a, a, a lower position. I applied to be one of the commissioners when Zozuru was 
uh, interviewed for the position of chair. And uh, the law required the president to pick eight commissioners from an, about uh, names of 15 members. So when you, the ranking was done from the interview, I was the top three. I was number three. <laughs> and my name was forwarded. But again, the president bypassed my name and declined to uh, appoint me as a commissioner and appointed other people. I think that was the last time I ever tried to seek state uh, appointment. Yeah. I raised up my hands and said uh, bye-bye to public service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that rather than uh, cry persecution, one would ask, had that particular individual shown his political preference? Because if that was the case, then probably then President Kibaki would have been right to reject the nomination. It happens everywhere, and you see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even in the developed countries, yeah. I won't um, be surprised. That, that, that is the practice um, in government, um, that um, if you stand very firm uh, on some of these issues, uh, and, and, and the people who you stood up to uh, are still in office, um, especially state house, um, then invariably you, 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 they would they would want to uh, take a revenge when the opportunity comes. Um, they've, they've done that um, uh, quite often. Um, I was very critical when I was in in in, 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 the, in the ninth parliament of the Kibaki uh, regime uh, as the shadow finance minister. Very critical of the government and their operation, policies and so forth. So when the, this nomination came in February, when I was out of parliament, um, they were very clear. But even before this, I remember um, uh, a professional body, Hawkins and Associates, advertising for the CEO of um, Capital Markets Authority. Um, and I applied. And I was top on the list. So the um, the, that body then forwarded the names to the board of directors of CMA. And so eight of us, when we were interviewed again, I was on top on the board. So when the names, the top three names with my name on top were forwarded to the uh, minister of finance, um, what do you expect? <laughs> they took number three. I mean, they, they won't. I mean, they, they knew we had a lot of quarrels with the minister. Uh, uh, Kimunya at the time in, in, in you know on chat house and so many issues really in, in national assembly so I think that's what happens I mean if you definitely um, uh, if you do that then they would they would they would go after you yes um, that that's 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 the routine in, in, in our government any decision you make in life there are, there are consequences and uh, the people who are aligned to Kibaki looked at me as their worst enemy uh, ever. And you will uh, be surprised that subsequently a, quiet, a decision was quietly made that I will never get uh, a chance to serve in government as long as President Kibaki was the president of the Republic of Kenya. And it's not seen to have a political side, but when you hold a public place, you ought to balance. If you're too much on one side, unless if you're going to, resign, to, to, to uh, um, drop your membership, then you are expected to balance and serve everybody without preference. And I think that's the problem we have. This should go to other professionals who may find themselves in, in the position I was in. It's a very small price to pay. Because, you know, the, the worst that can happen is for, as long as you have not stolen from anybody, the worst that can happen is some um, people in a deep state to profile you and ensure that you don't serve the state. But the decision you take, ultimately, ultimately, it serves public good. Uh, because I don't think, uh, even in the current ESCC, anybody can uh, take up his position without strictly complying with the process that has been put down in the law. So it's, it's, it's not something that should scare people. It's a small price. It's a small price to pay. Duncan Hemba, for KTN News.